soon to be ex-wife served divorce papers at Disney World. Hey, true story. Hope my email finds you. I'm in the process of divorcing my cheating wife. She's so silly. I caught her in the act. I have it all on camera. Ooh. Thanks to the custom necklace I got for her, I was able to operate the camera in the necklace from my phone. She had no idea and still doesn't know now. The camera quality is in 4K. Actually, the domestic does a 720p, but it got the job done. I got her this necklace when I suspected Jill of cheating. Jill's my soon-to-be ex-wife. Funny, when I gave it to her, she cried and said I was the most wonderful man in the world, then proceeded days later to hook up with the man in her car during lunch. I saw everything, and bits of the video are on my phone. I didn't confront her. I just lawyered up and put all my ducks in order. I DNA tested our son. He's not mine. He's seven years old. He's a junior and named after me. When my wife came home the day she cheated, which clearly wasn't the first time, she tried to make love. Her exact words were, Honey, I want to make love. Come on. Let's have another baby. I turned her down saying I didn't feel well. She accused me of cheating and said, When I'm away for this trip, you better not have another woman in my home. She was smiling when she said it. I said, Jill, I never have and never will cheat on you. She said, what's with this Jill thing these days? What happened to my nicknames? Snickerdoodle, honey. I walked away and said, I was tired. She went into the bathroom and showered. So my soon-to-be ex-wife and her best friend were taking the kids to Disney World. Just Jill, her best friend Becca, my wife's son, who's named after me and Becca's twin boys. When she got out of the shower, she told me how she wished I was coming. I reminded her that that was the plan before, but Becca broke up with her boyfriend, so they decided to make it a ladies and kids trip. So the week went by and they are all getting ready for the trip. It was gut-wrenching looking at the boy I thought was mine. I'm glad he never told his mom. I told him we were going to the doctor to get checkups together. He loved it. I told him mommy doesn't know that we have our doctor's appointment. This is only for the boys, so don't tell her, and we pinky promised. I hugged him and told him to have fun. I hugged my soon-to-be ex-wife and kissed her on the forehead, and I said goodbye. She looked at me and said, goodbye? I'm coming back, silly. They left out to catch their flight. So to be transparent, even before I saw the video of my wife cheating, I consulted with a divorce lawyer. I kicked things into play after I saw the live video of her cheating. They were all getting to their location and doing three days of other things. I don't remember what exactly. And then they were to end up going to Disney World. I hired someone in the location to serve my wife. So the necklace I gave her has a tracking device as well. Thank God she wore it during the trip. Before she left, I told her to always wear it because it reminded her of me. And it's like I'm always there, you know? So luckily she wore it every day while in Florida. I had everything shipped to the person I hired to serve my ex-wife. This guy and his team actually do this for a living. There are also private investigators and they work all over. In the packet were the DNA test results stating that he was not my boy. Also, anyone wanting to know where I purchased this necklace, it was from Amazon. You can just search it and find a ton of different ones. I need to leave a review actually and talk about how this product saved my life. So true story, I apologize if I seem all over the place. Let me dial back a bit and start from the beginning. I met my soon-to-be ex-wife in 2015. We met at a gas station. She was at the pump next to me and it was pretty cold. She put her pump on and kept trying to jump into her car but the pump kept giving out and would not continue to pump her gas without it being squeezed constantly. Of course, I went simp mode. Dun 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 dun. Hey, miss, you get into that car and I'll pump your gas for you. You get in there. Stay warm, beautiful. Mine is working perfectly fine. 
Oh, sir, thank you so much. True, I'm hoping you read that the way I'm writing it. <laughs> because that's exactly what I was, a super simp. I pumped it and held it there, freezing my butt off. I thought if this woman doesn't give me her number, I'm going to be upset. It finished. I put the pump back and walked over to her window. She wrote it down and said, I'm in such a hurry, but only if you're single, can you give me a call? And she handed me her phone number along with her name on it. I said, I absolutely will call you. True story, I'm walking back to my car and a big gust of wind came and blew the paper that had her name and number on it right out of my hand. That was the universe telling me not to call her. I chased the paper down and twice when I tried bending over to grab it, it'll blow away again and again. And finally, I got it. I ran and got into my car. I look over and there's a guy at the pump, but sitting in his car laughing at me. This man was looking at me laughing. I don't know if he saw everything or just me running after something, but he found it all too funny. Anyway, I put Jill's name and number into my phone and I went to finish business I needed to handle that day. I called her that next day in the afternoon. She picked up. I told her who I was and we talked for a good hour. Before hanging up, we decided to have brunch the next day and she offered to pay as a thank you for pumping her gas. So during brunch, things got very interesting. We initially were having an amazing time until her phone started blowing up. She excused herself twice and she started knocking back the mimosas. After getting enough in her, she told me she really liked me and wanted to be transparent for from the start. I said, okay, what's up? She tells me that she's recently separated from her boyfriend of two years. I said, how recent? She said she moved out last weekend, but he's still hoping to win her back. I told her, look, you're beautiful and all and a wonderful person, but you two clearly aren't over each other. She assured me that she was done with him and regretted moving in with him at all. I was asking, why did they break up? She stalled for a bit and said, he cheated on me with his ex. I think it was the stalling for me and I didn't believe it really. Nonetheless, she just got out of a relationship. She wasn't ready. I thanked her for brunch and was asking if she'll be okay driving home. She said she was going to stay at the restaurant a little longer, then go, but she'll be fine. I told her it's probably not a good idea we hang out because I'm dating with the intention of finding my wife and I don't see it here. She cried a tear and said she understood and I left. Seven months went by and she texted me again. Hey, it's Mary. I hope all is well. Me. Mary? I had her name saved and everything, but I honestly didn't remember which Mary it was. I had deleted her thread. Mary, I figured you'd forgotten about me. We had brunch together. You pumped my gas before, and I gave you my number. Me. Yes, Mary, I remember. I'm good. Thanks for asking. How are you? Mary, I'm wonderful. Thanks for asking. I was thinking about you. In fact, I think about you often. I've never forgotten about you. Wish we'd met later like now instead of back then. Me. Everything happens for a reason. Mary. So, are you still looking for your wife? Me. I am. Mary. Well, if I still have a chance, I stopped talking with my ex right after brunch with you. I blocked him and eventually he stopped trying. I focused on myself since then and I know I'm ready to date now. I'd love to see you. That's when I called her. We talked for about an hour and we set up a date for the following weekend to play miniature golf and other games at an arcade. When we met up again, I went in for a huge hug and she kissed me. Just like that. We had so much fun that day and continued to date often. Eventually, we made things exclusive. We were exclusive for about one and a half years before she got pregnant. I was so excited. I was going to be a father. So, of course, I thought I was doing the right thing and I proposed to her. We got married within six months after that proposal. It was a huge wedding, just family on both sides, but not all. Some of her friends, including Becca, who was also pregnant at the time.
The marriage was good until she started acting as if she was cheating on me, staying late at work, lying about where she was and where she was headed. She'd claim she'd be at work when actually she was at Becca's house. Just random weird things that were clearly all lies. That's what sparked my interest in the camera necklace. I initially bought a ring that had a camera on it, but she never would wear it. But she fell in love with the necklace. It really is nice. Becca is someone I never really trusted from the beginning. When I first met her, she came off really, really nice and really, really sweet, but I felt like it was a facade. It was a mask. I just had a gut feeling and over the years noticing how she wasn't with her child's father, whom I had never met until later. But she would have all these different guys and these guys would come to live with her and play stepdaddy. They'll have huge arguments. She'll confide in my soon-to-be ex-wife. Oh, he's cheating on me. I had to put him out or he's accusing me of cheating. But hey, tell him I wasn't cheating on him. I was with you, right? You know, stuff like that. It just all seemed weird and funny. I never trusted her. I don't want to say, oh, she was a bad influence on my soon-to-be ex-wife, but maybe my soon-to-be ex-wife could have been a bad influence on her, or maybe they're just two of the same. That's why they're friends. Becca's a redhead girl who gets a lot of attention from men. For a white woman, she's pretty thick. Not fat, but in the waist and the behind. It's a lot there, and she wears yoga pants or some of the tightest clothing to show it off. She's always showing it off. She's never trying to hide it. My wife's the complete opposite. Very slim, slender, no backside at all, which I'm okay with, not really much up top either, which didn't bother me. I'm not a picky person. I don't get with people because of that. Those were my younger days. Now, honestly, I just wanted a faithful, truthful, honest wife, but I turned out to get the complete opposite. My soon-to-be ex-wife, she is beautiful. I'm not going to take that away from her. She's a very, very pretty woman. Anyway, when she started acting weird, that's when I got suspicious. I ordered the camera, and one actually worked. She wears it all the time. So before I caught her in the car with this guy on camera, she'd actually wear the camera to work, and she wasn't doing anything wrong, and I started to question myself. I started to wonder, am I in my head too much? Why am I creating these scenarios? This is my wife. She's not going to do this to me. And I almost wanted to go see a shrink. Maybe I was insecure. Why was I so insecure? I make good money. I have a family. I have a child. I have a wife. I have a home, a car. I don't need for anything. We're not struggling. Why am I so insecure? But seeing her in that car with that guy told me that I was not tripping. I was not making things up in my head because I was insecure. No, I had gut feelings and my intuition was telling me something was wrong. Men, listening to True Story Channel, take these stories and learn from them, please. Listen to your gut. It's not lying to you. It knows when something is wrong. It knows when something isn't right. Heck, it knows when things are going good and things are right. I'll tell you, you just have to learn to listen to it. So like I said before, I had consulted a divorce lawyer before I even saw that she was cheating on me because my gut feeling was telling me to do so. But I was going back and forth on maybe I'm tripping. Maybe I should see a shrink, yada yada. But seeing that she actually was giving someone my love in the car proved me that I wasn't wrong. It took everything for me to hold that in. I didn't say anything to her. She did notice that my attitude changed because she started asking me things like, why don't you call me my nicknames anymore? You keep calling me by my first name. Things like that, she knew, things like that. She knew something was wrong. She started to have a gut feeling, but because she's guilty and she's been doing dirt, she backed off. I noticed that. So she'd ask me, what's wrong? Or why am I doing something? And instead of getting really angry with me, and maybe starting a fight, I just say, nothing's wrong. I'm just tired or I have a headache. She'd laugh it off and back off and not even argue, which wasn't like her before. She'd used to get upset. Now she just, now she just backs off. It's almost as if she didn't want to put herself in any position to out herself. Let me back off right now. I know I'm doing dirt. So I'm just going to back off and let him cool down and hopefully he'll never find out. 
I can't believe she never really looked at that necklace and noticed that that was not a marble built into the necklace. It's a freaking camera. So like I said not too long ago, my soon-to-be ex-wife, Becca, and the children went down to Florida to eventually go to Disney. But they did a lot of other things beforehand. So the entire time they were there, I'm watching the camera here and there. I'm not using it at all. I'm not using it all the way because you actually have to charge it. I made sure it was fully charged before she left. As long as I don't leave it on, it works fine. Even with far distances, it's a pretty amazing device. Very expensive, but it's worth it. So my soon-to-be ex-wife and Becca would go to a hookah bar at like 1 or 2 a.m., leaving the boys behind in the hotel sleeping. I saw flirting mainly coming from other men. They'd only stay at the bar for an hour at most, but went back to the room and went to sleep. The night before Disney, my soon-to-be ex-wife and Becca met two guys at the bar. The guys said they were staying in the same hotel, and they were there to film. After making out what was being said, these two guys I found out were corn stars. I was disappointed and disgusted. Of course, my soon-to-be ex-wife and Becca both went to these gentlemen's hotel room. And what you think happened actually happened. I saw a video of the guy hugging my wife, but I couldn't see anything when her clothing was pulled off because clearly the necklace went off with it. It was facing the floor and you can kind of still hear sounds in the background and clearly they were doing it. I kept signing off and signing back on. It lasted maybe 15 minutes. I signed back on 15 minutes after they initially started and my wife was in the bathroom putting her clothes on. She walked out and her and Becca left. Once they got back to the room, I knew why they left so quickly. Junior was crying saying, Mommy, where were you? I was scared. My soon-to-be ex-wife hugged and kissed him to sleep. I was disgusted at this woman. Who the F did I marry? I turned it off and I was just anxious to divorce this filthy woman. I got a call the next day from the PI telling me he was ready and if I can provide her location. I saw that they were heading to Disney and the PI was able to find it and tell their Uber. I cut my wife's necklace camera on when he told me he'd, he'd had them spotted and walking. I could hear the P.I. screaming, Ma'am, Mrs. Smith, fake name of course, Mrs. Smith, she turns and he says, Ma'am, you have been served. Have a great day. She yells, Served? What the F is this? Some anthrax package? Becca picked it up and opened it and said, Oh my gosh, they're divorce papers. Jill grabbed them and also saw that the DNA tests were there as well. She flipped out. What the heck? She started calling me frantically. I never answered, never responded to her text message. They never went inside to Disney. The kids were crying and upset. I didn't care. So something else, guys. That same very day of the Disney World incident, I went to Walmart to buy some things. I ran into Becca's baby's father. He's a tall six foot seven white guy who's really cool. A really great guy. He played semi-pro sports and is very professional business dude today. We spoke and he's asking me how I'm doing and I just and I just let it all out. Told him everything. This five foot nine man crying in this six foot seven guy's arms. I'm sure it looked weird to people, but, but it happened. He told me to keep my head up and he proceeded to tell me why he left Becca. She's definitely no good and has some sex addiction. He also wanted to apologize for what he was about to tell me. And he said he'd understand if he wanted to off him for this, but it's the truth. He was darn near in tears himself when he was about to tell me this. So to add more to this crazy enough story, I'm not 100% sure how true this is, but according to Becca's baby's father, the father of her twins, he's also the father of my soon-to-be ex-wife's son. He truly believes that. He said he was asking her for a DNA test several times and she shut it down. I don't know if she'll do it now, but I want to figure out a way to do it without her knowing. He wants to know because he wants to do the right thing, which, I'm, which I commend. But I want to do the right thing so I can sue him. Or maybe I can sue her, Jill. Who knows? My lawyer told me that since we both work, 
I don't have to worry about alimony. What I will have to worry about is maybe losing the house or splitting the house. We may have to sell it, but he'll do everything in his power to make sure I'm not losing in the end. As far as me getting out of child support, he told me there is a chance that I may have to pay child support, but he's never had to go through that before. He's been through paternity fraud and men finding out that they are not the father, and he's gotten all of them off. But he can't make me a promise because there's a chance that the judge may say, hey, you're in this kid's life. You're his father. Pay for it. So I'm thinking it'll probably help if I can find out if Becca's baby's father is truly my soon-to-be ex-wife's baby's father. This is disgusting. I can't believe they could possibly have the same baby's father. I don't know if they were... I don't know if they were like some type of sex workers or or both are just addicted to it. Because I will tell you this, if my wife had been cheating on me our entire marriage, she definitely is addicted to it because we did it often. I mean a lot. Sometimes I'd be too tired. But I actually started taking medication to make sure I was always ready because she always wanted it. Jill and Becca were both screwing this guy at the same time, sometimes together. I married a woman who was completely for the streets. Now here I am, waiting on STD test results and a divorce. Feeling lost and dumb and full of regret. Maybe I'll update. Maybe I won't. Who knows? Take care, True Story.